it's going to be super simple. Five minutes for each, or five poses for each duration. So five one-minute poses, five two-minute poses, five five-minute poses, and then five ten-minute poses, and we're done. We're done the session. Uh, feel free to save. Definitely subscribe to this channel because we're going to be doing this more than once, especially if people are into it. Okay, and before we get started, um, a couple little housekeeping things. We're going to be sketching on Magma Studio. You can choose to sketch on anything you like, but we're using Magma, Masse and I, because then you can see us drawing together. We're going to be drawing on the exact same document, the exact same uh, image. Okay, and also, if you look up towards the top there, you can see it says Schoolism Winter Sale, 30% off, expires January 10th, 2022. So if you go to schoolism.com and you go to courses with a annual subscription, with one subscription, okay, if you subscribe, you get access to all the courses, there's tons and tons of courses here. Um, anything from painting to drawing to storyboarding to all sorts of things. And with your subscriptions, kind of like Netflix for artists, you get access to all of them. Okay, so here we go. Five one-minute poses, five two-minute poses, five five-minute poses, and five ten-minute poses. Okay, so... You ready, Masse? <laughs> I guess so. All right, here we go. Here we go, everybody. Here's the first pose, okay? And this topic is all about um, cosplay. So go ahead and start your drawings. You have one minute, or actually, should I say less than one minute now? And don't worry if the beginning drawings are not too hot. It's not supposed to be amazing looking at first. Okay, this is warm up. Also, if you want to ask any questions, we have our Discord community. Hey, Discord community. And also, you can ask, you could ask questions directly in Discord, which is kind of preferred. It's a little easier just hearing people talk. Um, but also, you can type in questions into Slido, okay? Hashtag uh, life drawing. It's not on the screen, but yeah, if you type, if you search for life drawing, then you'll find our Slido. Okay, three, two, one, zero, and we're done. Okay, that was one minute. Pretty quick, pretty ugly looking on my end, but that's okay. That, you know, that's what it's all about. So here we go. Next one. Okay, next one, one minute pose again. I recognize this guy. All right, one minute, starting now. Some of us have done life drawing before, right? And some of us have even done costume life drawing. Um, the ones that have only done kind of like the nude figure drawing, you can definitely see it or notice a big difference right away with costume life drawing. Oh my gosh, there's so much more to do. Yeah, it's like thinking about like what is under the clothes and then how like how thick is the, like the material that they're um, putting on top. And it's like thinking of the folds and all that. It, it's definitely a lot to um, take in. But I think for this, it's a lot of it is like simplifying things, like grouping things together without getting too focused on like yep. all the details. And we're done. <laughs> That's oh. one minute. <laughs> okay, so third one minute drawing. You ready, Masse? Okay, here we go. One minute. I recognize this guy too. I'm looking forward to the, uh, are you a Harry Potter fan, Missy? Um, I, I, I read the books, but I'm, I'm going to say I'm like a big Harry Potter fan. Yeah, there's different levels to that stuff, huh? To, <laughs> yeah. like, if you're a fan or not. Um, mm. Well, I like the movies. They were great. I didn't read the books. 
up. I'm looking. What is that? Is somebody, somebody's mic is hot. All right, um, 20 I, seconds, about 20 seconds left. I was going to say, um, for the Harry Potter, I actually haven't watched the very last movie because um, at the time when it released, I was like, oh, wait, I want to read the book first and then um, watch the movie. And I, I actually didn't read the book until just a couple years ago. And um, I think I, I really enjoyed the book, so I'm glad I read it. But And time's up. Sorry. <laughs> just wanted oh, no to mention. Worries, no worries. Sorry, but yeah, I, I've yet to watch the last movie. Well, and then there's <laughs> one coming out, The Cursed Child or something like that. Okay, mm -hmm. so... This is pose number four, everybody. Pose Wait number a, four. One minute. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, Masaya, your volume is a little low. Uh, if you can turn that up a bit. Alrighty. Hold on. Oh, okay. Thank you so yeah. much, CJ, you for letting us know. having a little trouble hearing her. Okay. It's probably because I'm facing away from the microphone. Sorry. Let me just... Okay. It's moved. Is this a bit better? Awesome, thank you. No problem. Yeah, I'll definitely go look into that microphone. Line. Yay, all right. Ooh, this is a fun one. I tried to get a assortment of um, subjects and challenges here. 17 seconds left, holy smokes. Well. It's a good thing this is pose number four for the um, one minute poses. Five seconds. It's all about just warming up everybody, so don't get too discouraged, okay? It's not supposed to look amazing. All right, last one minute pose. You ready, Masay? Yeah. Okay, here we go. I like this one. This one looks kind of cool. All right, so. Also, if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to ask while we're drawing. Also, for people that are watching this on YouTube after the fact, after the live session, we're going to be doing this again on Wednesday, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. Oh, my God, 20 seconds. <laughs> okay, everybody's got to really keep an eye on their mics. Um, if we want to keep the Discord live. All right. Time's up. Oh, my gosh. Hey, I like that one, Masay. It looks like animation. Uh, cool. <laughs> Next one. Here we go. Two minutes. Okay, we just graduated. Two minutes. Starting now. Yeah, this, this really brings me back to um, life drawing back in school. Right? Isn't it fun? Did you like life drawing when you were a student? Oh, I loved it. I think it's like one of those classes where it made you realize how much you don't know. So you wanted to go, but then at the same time, even though it was challenging, it's like you still you still wanted to go um, even after classes. So like there would be after hour life drawing at school. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I liked it so much, I taught it at Sheridan for a little bit before I quit to start Imaginism Studios. Yeah, missed out on that. I probably wa was uh, a bit late in my year. You were already gone by the time I was there. Yeah, that was only for maybe, a, I want to say, two years. And look at that. We still have a little bit of time. Still got 40 seconds. 
not like the other one, right? It's like the, the one minute poses gets you ready for the two minute poses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I gotta say, I, I really do miss <clears throat> the live in person life drawing sessions. I don't miss the drive, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's for sure. From Toronto to Oakville. All right, two minutes. First one is done. Ready for the next one? Let's go on to the next one here. So here we go. Two minutes. Starting now. This one's difficult, you know, because it has like when you're doing. Um, nude figure drawing it's all generally the same tone but mm -hmm. then when you're doing costumes a lot of times it's like if you just drew the outline of Darth Vader it doesn't really look like Darth Vader as much right you need the the tones mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. I also love how nobody really has any questions meaning everybody's probably <laughs> drawing right yeah, I'm I'm even like struggling to keep up with the time and you know, trying to figure out what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> this multitasking, it's uh I think it's good for the brain. I, I have a question though. Um, sure. like working with a costume, how would you go about it with uh drawing it quickly and not losing yourself into the folds and uh what's your approach? Oh, I try to break down the elements. So I start to look at it and go, what are the major elements here? Does it have a jacket? Does it have, um, you know, a helmet? That's another element. Does it, like for this one, there's gloves, there's the jacket, there's, um, and then there's the variations of um, values. I'm trying to look at all of those and I'm trying to think, do I have time for the eyes and nose and mouth and all that stuff? Perhaps not, right? So I'll tackle the values first like I'm doing right now. And then if I have time, I'll go to the other stuff, but it doesn't look like I have much time. All right, and that's two minutes. But it is cool to see the side by side. What did Masse do? What did I do? It's great. It's really fun. Okay, next one. Two minutes, third pose. This one, um, CJ and I were, were doing before the, the stream, just practicing, like, what's this stream going to be like and everything. And, and CJ was, like, saying... This pose seems deceptively simple. <laughs> right, it does, but it does. it's, uh, you got the full body for this one. You also have high heeled shoes, which is like, ugh, that's not the easiest thing to draw sometimes especially with the angles on the shoes that you're not maybe that used to, like the back of the shoe. I guess it seems simple because it's kind of like a those body suits, so there's not as many like things that are covering the form. Oh, did I even start the two minute timer? I didn't, I don't think I started it. I'm gonna start it at one minute because I think we've probably gone through a one minute. Okay. Hey, Bobby, since now you're working on this really difficult pose, how about another question? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> we got this one that came in. What are the first things you focus on to translate a pose? How much do you think about the anatomy while making this exercise? Ah, so um, first thing is what do I concentrate on first? I concentrate on whatever's the most important. I know that's a little cryptic, but that's exactly what you do. You look at each pose and you go, what's this pose about? What's the most important thing? And then what was the second part to that question? I already forgot. 
Uh, the second part is how much do you think about the anatomy while you're doing these quick, uh, quick exercise sketches? Oh, um, not all the time, actually, right? It's like you're constantly switching gears between thinking about this, thinking about this aspect, thinking about that aspect. All right, there you go. Two-minute pose. That's the mm -hmm. third one. Let's go on to the next pose here. All right, ready and begin. Gas mask. Oh, I forgot I put in this guy. <laughs> this isn't really cosplay, is it? I think this is a real person, but whatever. This is quite the challenge. So most important thing for me for this one is like the body, the arm, the tilt of them, you know, the positioning of them, and uh, the, the head. Then the other parts to this is like, well, one side of it is pretty much all in shadow, right? This side right here. So I'm just going to put in a bit of shadow on that side. Yeah. Just a reminder, if you do have any questions and you want to type them in so CJ can read them out, uh, you just go to slido.com, hashtag life drawing, nice and simple. And then you could ask your question there. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel so you can do this again, because we're going to be doing this again next week. Yeah. It's going to be fun because every week we're going to come up with different themes. And, you know, if you also have suggestions, you can write in the comments. Yeah. To, like, you know, do what other people want to do. Great idea. Now, I think one of the difficult parts about this that a lot of people will ignore is like, how do you translate all that camo, um, you know, patterns? And I feel like you don't want to ignore that because that's such a huge part of this image, you know? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we only have five seconds, so I don't know what you're going to do about that. <laughs> Cool. All right. Time's up. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Next one. That one was a challenging one. Here we go. Five minute or sorry, two minute pose. Last two minute pose. And we got Wolverine here. That's a neat pose. Wolverine is a good introduction to our next question. Sweet. How do you how do you guys uh, work with poses in perspective, like for dynamic poses? Um, well, generally, it's it's a lot like other poses, but um, there's a lot more sh switching gears between thinking about it anatomically in a three-dimensional point of view, as well as um, thinking about it in a two-dimensional graphical point of view where you're looking at shapes, you're looking at the, the relationship between shapes. Right, Masay, Don't do you do the same thing? Um, oh, sorry. No, just... <laughs> so <laughs> <on the> <laughs> oh, it's great. Um, so the... the thing that I'm saying is like uh, with dynamic poses I generally will think about the anatomy but I'll switch between the anatomy and I'll think about um, everything that I'm seeing from a two-dimensional point of view so that you're looking mm -hmm. at graphical shapes mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. how they relate to each other yeah yeah totally and especially when it's perspective another thing that I think about is like think about ellipses like what will make the illusion of uh, whatever forced perspective uh, there is like so for this pose it's like his um, his tank top like you want to think how is that going over the shoulder and maybe just push it a tiny bit just to like um, give the viewer like an idea of like oh this is actually wrapping around this form that means he's leaning forward which uh, should be able to communicate like what uh, how the pose is like 
I forgot his blades. That that's a sin for this one. I'm just gonna add them on. <laughs> the time's already done, but um, oh. I can't leave this like this. Can't leave Wolverine without blades. My gosh. Okay. Well, that's my bad. I should have been more aware of the time. Now we're heading into five-minute poses. So time flies when you're having fun. Let's go to the five-minute pose. Okay, five minutes, everybody. Here we go, starting now. I feel like this is this is your pose, Mase. I'm going <laughs> to mess this one up for some reason. I was like, oh, this is a, a comfortable... Uh pose for me. <laughs> Definitely comfort zone. Does anybody else have any questions or anything? We have a few questions from Slido. Oh, sure. Yeah, let's do. Yeah. So one of the questions we have is like, other than, you know, getting your you know, drawing mileage in, how do you feel that these quick poses help you improve? Oh, well, shoot. Um, in like just about a million ways, this is the well of knowledge. You know, like you go to life drawing to figure out what you need to improve. Also, speeding up thinking. Um, you know, you can do life drawing in a million different ways, and that's why. I wanted Miss Say to sketch with me because she does things differently than I do. And then uh, you can see how the two different approaches happen. Um, you know, a lot about sketching something or painting something very, very difficult, it, it, it's more about seeing things um, that are very, very difficult in a simplified manner. Right? And that hey, isn't that what we've been trying to do this whole entire time? Anybody that's been participating in uh, drawing these life drawings here, that's what you're experiencing. I'm sure of it, right? And it's like, how do you simplify all this stuff that I'm seeing? But then, you know, once you're done simplifying, then we do it again, and we do it again, and we do it again. And it's like this wonderful workout for your mind, you know, and your mind just gets stronger and stronger as you're able to, uh, simplify faster and faster. Also, um, being able to sketch fast kind of saved my life academically in school because <laughs> I, you know, I have this habit of like using my logic. And when I am attending a class where it's like the logic doesn't make sense, like, why am I taking this class? I lose interest really badly and it's really hard for me to focus. So I developed a quick method by going to life drawing so much. And if I was in a subject, you know, in a class that I didn't like, and this isn't advice for the students out there, please don't do this. Uh, but <laughs> if it was a subject I didn't like, I, I would do it in my quick style. Right? And I'd be done that assignment so damn quick. I might not get the best um, grade, but it didn't matter because the class didn't really matter to me. I wasn't that interested in it. But it gave me more time to work on the subjects that I really liked, like life drawing. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> yeah, learning, learning how to do things very quickly and where that's where like the one minute poses help a lot. It, it helps you try to get the idea across a lot faster too so you can focus on other, other things. Yeah, you know, I also heard that um, it's like, how do you earn a lot of money, uh, a good wages doing comics? Learn how to draw faster. You know, it's like a lot of these uh, top level professionals, they, yeah, they get the, the good dollars, but also they're good dollars to them because they've learned how to draw faster. Mm -hmm. 
So Bobby and Miss Say, when you're working on these uh, life drawings, do you ever go ahead and alter the pose to make it read a bit better yes. while you're studying? Do you do that, Miss Say? Sometimes, yeah. Uh, it depends on what I'm trying to achieve, but if it if I feel like it'll get the message across clear, it's good practice, I would say. All right, ten seconds left. Sorry, I have a question, please. Sure. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about using your own cartoon style for live drawing, especially if you're more uh, animation oriented? Uh, yeah, I, I encourage that, you know, look at Glenn Keane's life drawings. They look like Ariel a lot of times, like they look like a cartoony version, right? You know, what I'm talking about, right, Missy? Mm -hmm. I would say though, um, it's probably good. Like this is actually a great opportunity to practice drawing, not as realistic as possible, but, um, understanding like the proportions and anatomy of a human body because like I guess you know everything does come from life life <laughs> life and it's good to just like know how to quote unquote break the rules so um for me like I'm I'm pretty glad that I tried to draw as a like almost like close to one-to-one -to, -one to the pose like whenever I went life drawing because like then I knew exactly like how muscles were where like body parts go and stuff like that so that when I do more of a cartoony style then like I could just simplify things but know exactly where things sh would go and uh Masay, sorry I yeah. like the the timer was done so I just started the next one no worries, you can get a head start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely I'm definitely a hand talker. Like I use my hands to talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. The bottom left shoe. Oh, okay. I didn't understand what the heck I was looking at at first. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. Um, how often do you exaggerate the pose while you do figure? Because I know along the same vein you're saying, like, you kind of want to keep it accurate just to do, like, the study, but do you ever, like, exaggerate the pose? All the time. Um, just different degrees, I would say. Like, uh, a lot of times, I, in my head, I'm exaggerating the pose, right? But I might turn it down a a bit because I want to do something perhaps quote unquote realistic uh, but then in the end it actually looks kind of realistic and not very characterized at all um, kind of like Norman Rockwell you know when he does his uh, portraits and stuff it probably feels more like the subject than the subject itself sometimes mm -hmm. Right. And, and then there's different versions. So if you start going like you start looking at something, you go, yeah, this l feels really cartoony. Then you might actually want to do it even more stylized. Yeah. And I feel like, um, you know, when people go into life drawing, not everyone has the exact same goals, if that makes sense. Yes. So like. Um, someone who paints realistically will approach things very differently from an animator, for example, because um, in animation, you do have to kind of like exaggerate uh, poses. So then they would like really push in, see like, how can they get the best like line of action? But then let's say someone who works for, um, you know, video games, they wouldn't make it as like pushed or cartoony. Does that make sense? <laughs> I stopped listening after a while. Sorry, I, I was like, what's wrong with this helmet? Um. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I, I hope that helps. But did that help the, the person that asked the question? 
uh, about yeah. the live drawn cards and stuff. Yeah, uh, or the, no, the the other, the other question. I yeah. heard a yes. Yeah, that okay. was good. Great. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Or you're welcome for Massey's answer. There you go. <laughs> I'll be taking all the credit. <laughs> Ooh, I kind of like this one, Masay. I think I, I feel good about this one, this uh, five-minute pose. And we have about 50 minutes left, just to let you know. It's like um, we finally got our rest off, and now we're able to... Yeah, and this is probably a good time to also say, hey, if you're still painting with us, if you're still drawing with us, good for you you are you are like the little one percent now keep going all the way to the end that's what it's all about i guess that's another reason why I like quick poses like 30 seconds and one minute poses uh is good it's because you just want to like get your hand moving and like your rust uh, off yes uh, also, I think we're done. Time's done. So let's go on to the next five-minute pose here. Was Was that? Okay, here we go. Next five-minute pose. Oh, my goodness. This one looks like a ton of fun. Okay, this one's five minutes, everybody. All right, we have another question for you guys. Yeah, let's keep them coming. Uh, have you ever found yourself yourself stuck in a loop of constant rough studies? Um, you have an artist who feels like they're practicing constantly but can't find the confidence to make the actual artwork. Oh. Masay, do you ever find yourself just doing rough studies? And you can't get All yourself to finish anything? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm 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 definitely uh, one of those people as well. I think uh, one thing that has actually helped is like make that practice painting or drawing like almost like a preliminary for your final. So uh, actually for the uh, winter sale painting that I did for schoolism. Which I sale? Did a Schoolism's winter sale. <laughs> yeah, school, yeah, the school is winter sale. Yeah. Um, but for that, actually, for every piece that I've been doing, um, I do practice pieces. So, like, pretty much painting studies of um, references that I find that can help me with the illustration. So, because I'm practicing that, it's kind of like okay, now that I know how it how to execute it, then I can take that into my final piece, so that practice won't actually go to waste so it's like two birds one stone love it and uh approximately generally how long are those little studies um i try to do it less than an hour um, i try to aim for 30 minutes and it's really just to get the information down okay so they're pretty good decent studies like uh, 30 yeah, minutes, that's a pretty good amount of time. You can really study a lot. Yeah, and then it's kind of like figuring out... It, it's kind of like um, if you're going on a road trip, you'll look and like figure out which, which path to take or like which hotel to stay at, and you're kind of doing all this research first so that when you actually execute the trip itself, it's like you'll know exactly where to go. But then, whereas if you don't, you're just like... Oh, like while I'm driving, I'm looking at my phone and <laughs> seeing which uh, which hotel has the best rating. And so like you're kind of like juggling multiple things at the same time. But when you do the study, it really helps kind of like prepare you for the, you know, for the real uh, trip itself. Mm -hmm. In this case, the illustration. Two minutes left. Two minutes try to get in a couple tones in here light tone as well 
usually when I'm doing uh, five minute digital sketches, that's when I'll try to get in a little bit of uh, light tones as well as not just dark tones. But everybody, you know, is on their own journeys, okay? So um, just because that's what I do doesn't mean that that's what's best for you, the viewer. Yeah, Think speaking of everyone being on their own journey, do you have any advice for when to stop overworking a piece of art? Oh. Stop it. Uh. I think anytime you slow down, that's when I, I tend to just stop for a sec and then work on something else and then come back to it. Like, even if it's just 10 minutes that you stop, then you could look at it again and go, uh, I hate this thing or, ah, uh, not that bad. Or, you know what? It just needs a little bit of this. And then you start, you know, doing it up. But um, sleeping on it is, if you can, that, that's the number one piece of advice. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes you, you do something and you think it's amazing. And then you wake up the next day and it's like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> that looks like garbage. Okay, Thank seven you. seconds. Oh, my gosh. Not the best, but ugh. <laughs> Okay, the next five minutes, this one will be a good one. Here we go. Ready? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Challenging. But like I was saying before, um, a lot of art is all about how to look at something complex in a simplified way. Right, so how can we look at all of this stuff in a simplified way? Break it down into the elements. You know, it's got an upper torso, lower torso. It has one arm that you could really see, and the other arm you can't really see, so you could go on to the head. The head, you can see that. And then there's the sword. The sword's going to be important, too. Any other questions, anybody? A question. Sure. Um, how, what tools do you use in your head to like make sure things are proportional? Like, how do you know the arm is proportional to the head to the body? Um, so I kind of will look at the image uh, almost like with my peripheral view you know um so i'm kind of glancing at it and as i glance at it i ask myself does it look right does it look wrong i start asking myself questions is the arm too short or is it too long or is it set too high or whatever um yeah and it's really just about asking yourself constant questions while viewing the image concentrating on it as a whole as opposed to you know parts do you have anything to add to that Masse? like keeping everything in proportion uh, maybe marking landmarks to kind of just make notes to yourself like okay here's the head uh, maybe the hand is here like uh, like, does it look like it's too far? Is it, is it too short? Then you can kind of like move it around so that you have a general idea of like knowing where to put your next uh, like big stroke to indicate, you know, the gesture of the arm or the, the body. It's a great idea. You know, it's like half of us is like just concentrating on the drawing. So it's like uh, I notice my the things that I say going on autopilot a little bit. <laughs> yeah. 
But it's great. I, I love the challenge as well of um, talking while drawing. Do you, Bobby, would you say you're approaching every study right now like the same way or are you doing no. like a, a bit different? Yeah, I'm reevaluating pretty much every mm -hmm. single one. That's I think good. the next um, stream, I think maybe it'll get better and better, you know, and then I'll find little bits and pieces that I can reuse different methods. What about you? Um, actually, so this one, I was thinking like, oh man, there's so much like reflection and then sheets of like armor on top of each other. It's like, how in the world am I going to draw all this in one like, or in five minutes? Yeah. And then I realized like, there's a lot of darks. Like if you squint your eyes, there's a lot of like dark shapes that you can find. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'll just block in the, the dark shapes. And as long as I get that, like, I think it should be able to communicate like the like the figure so i'm trying to approach it in that way because like if you look at my other ones um i i'm not doing like uh blocking in dark values mm -hmm. like so kind of like adjusting as i'm going like what is the best solution for this problem and that's kind of the same with like any illustration or any projects that we work on it's like nothing is going to be the same so it's it's about being like flexible as well and reacting to it and knowing how to execute it the most efficient way 10 seconds by the way <laughs> <laughs> i distracted you it's looking so good inside <laughs> thanks <laughs> It has a good long answer while you're drawing and everything. That's great. Yeah, and I'm a hand talker, so it doesn't help. <laughs> okay, we're done. Hey. Ready for the next one? Yep. All right, next one is the last five-minute pose before we get into 10-minute poses. So this would be good. <laughs> this one also feels like a Masse pose here, mm -hmm. like cute little anime girl kind of thing yes drawing girls is definitely within my comfort zone um, I don't think I could say the same <laughs> what, what would you say is your comfort zone uh, anything furry I, mean, I think, I I think anything answer. furry yeah <laughs> like I don't know why but furry stuff has always, has always been cool. It's always been something I was very interested in. Animals. Maybe because I'm not a very hairy person. So I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> the Asian, Asian gene. I know some, I, yeah, I, I hear you. I know some hairy oh, Asian people, scary. but, uh, yeah, my, my family lacks, uh, hairiness. I, I don't think I could, I know I can't, uh, grow a mustache, which is pretty sad. <laughs> but then who wants to see Bobby with a mustache anyways? Like nobody, uh, so probably, um. A good thing. Hey, so we have another question. Uh, what brushes are you using? Default. Default round. Just a default brush. And then it's just adjusting the... For me, I'm using pressure sensitivity. So like the harder... So it's like... Uh, when you press light, it's light, and then when you press dark, it gets darker. But I think Bobby, yours is a different. Um, oh, you you're using uh like your density, your flow has um, pressure sensitivity. Is that what you're saying? Uh yeah, so it's like kind of like a pencil or pen. It's like the darker you press, the darker it gets. Oh okay, yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's I'm just using a, 
a super simple default brush. But it's, it's really how you use the brush, uh, which I don't have time for, but... Can I do a little plug about my sketching course? Is that cool? Because uh, in my sketching course, uh, Speed Sketching Animals on Schoolism, um, I actually talk heavily about how I use the brush. And then I go into it even more in depth in my other Schoolism course of digital painting. I really, really get into it. Because there is, it, even though I'm just like, ah, this is a default brush, there is a lot to it in the way that you use it. Yeah, it's cool. <clears throat> I remember when I was learning it uh, from you like years ago, it made it really made me slow down and try to like understand like what it is I'm the like I'm marking down on the paper. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty it was a really cool approach that I haven't really done before. <laughs> At first when you're saying that I was like you're like uh yeah, well, when I started learning that from you, it really made me slow down. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, sorry. Like, no, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's just like that split second. Where I was like, oh, That's no. Funny. That's funny. Yeah. Because, like, I guess because of, like, whatever brush I was using, I was, like, I wasn't really thinking of, like, uh, values and tones and, like, line quality. Mm -hmm. But then um, that one really made me think, like, okay, what kind of mark do I want to make? How can I achieve that? And yeah, nowadays I use many different types of brushes in many different ways because also because of that same thing, like just learning from somebody else, how do they do something? And then all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, I want to try that. And then you, you know, you try, you slow down at first because you're really concentrating, you're really concentrating on learning. And then mm -hmm. you all of a sudden you start speeding up after, you know, because you get better at it. All right, four seconds, holy shoot. Wow, great job, Masse. Okay, time's up. First 10 minute, first 10 minute pose, okay? Everybody still having fun, I hope? Starting now, 10 minutes. Five 10 minute poses, starting off with this one. I really like this. Hey. Yeah, this is going to be a lot about like shape, shape language. Yeah, this one's going to be a little tough, a little tough, I think. I really tried to pick things that will also kind of challenge me. So as you can tell, I have a lot of, well, first, like just people in general i'm i'm comfortable in doing but not as comfortable as like you know like creatures or something mm -hmm. i think it's just more about the familiarity of it um because after you learn how to draw a bunch of stuff well you learn it you, you get to these next levels because you understand the subject so much more right like how does how do costumes work like uh one time you're explaining kimonos masse and like how those are put on mm -hmm. and everything um you know if you're not used to drawing something and then you have to uh a lot of times you're not as good as at, at it until you understand what the heck, how it works, right? And I think that's what slows me down with a lot of these um, sketches, these subjects, is because I don't, I'm not as familiar with these kinds of subjects. That's part of the fun. Yeah, and what's fun about learning is like, once you realize that, then, uh, or at least for me, I realize like once I learn something, it applies to a lot of other stuff that I've been like trying to learn. So it's like if I'm trying to learn um, folds, for example, it's like 
I start to learn, like remember things about perspective and it's like a good reminder. And then it's, and then it helps me learn about shape design because the folds and stuff, you, it is about like shape, like big, medium and small and like where you want to simplify. And so it's like, although like, and I know people have like the pressure of like, oh, but I have so much stuff to learn. Like I have to learn it all. Um, it's, it's a good reminder that like, when you learn one thing, you're actually learning like five other things at the same time. You just don't really realize it. I always say like the biggest, one of the biggest challenges these days is just staying focused on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Cause there's so many things that kind of grab your attention and, and not just, you know, stuff to get you off of art, but even art itself, there's so many things like you see this person doing this and you're like, oh, I want to learn that. And then you see another person doing something else and you're like, oh, Blender, I want to do that. And then <laughs> some other thing. And it's like you can end up trying a million things in like half a year and end up knowing nothing. Mm -hmm. and it's all about just staying on something, you know, staying on it for a bit until you actually have gained something from it just a simple little tip for people uh, wanting to improve and honestly the other tip is i know you know saying it a bunch of times but um you know the schoolism winter sale i do schoolism courses I do them all the time. I always have one that I'm on or multiple that I'm on. And any time, you know, that I'm looking for something to watch or whatever or listen to, like during lunchtime or while I'm working, I'll put on schoolism courses. And you'll be so surprised on, well, not you, say you know, but um, <laughs> people will be so surprised on how much they learn just passively by just doing that you know because you'll you'll do stuff and then you'll look up and you'll be like oh shoot okay yeah well, all right yeah i can actually apply that right now to whatever i'm doing oh that happened to me with uh nathan's class i remember i was just playing it in the background and i was painting and then he said something i'm like <laughs> oh that's what i'm missing yeah it's it's pretty cool it is pretty fun that happened to me all the time with uh, Dice Satsumi and Robert Kondo's course, mm -hmm. I remember. I think um, one thing I would have to mention is make sure to actually watch the course first and pay attention, and then you can play it in the background. Oh. So that it's kind of like a, a reminder. See, I'm a bad student, then I don't do that. I, I do oh. <laughs> I do it in any way, you know, but if I'm just kind of putting the sh the class on I have it in my head that I'm going to watch it again like the whole entire thing again because right now I'm not fully paying attention mm -hmm. I see yeah generally I'll just stay on one course for like a few months and by the time I'm done with it I must have played that thing like at least three times mm-hmm I guess different, I get that's a good, also another good reminder that everyone works a bit different from each other. So there's no one way of doing things. Yes. Agreed. How are we on time? Oh, uh, one minute, a little bit <laughs> more than one minute. <laughs> cool. Any other questions? We have one from Slido. All right. Uh, do you have any advice for someone wanting to get back into art, and finding the motivation after taking a few months hiatus? Yeah, you know, like, uh, no, I, I just hesitate to bring up schoolism again because I, you know, it sounds pretty transparent, but um, honestly, I, that's what's gotten me out of ruts and things like that, or like a little hiatus, 
you take a class, you do something different in a different way, a lot of times that's the best way to get out of a rut is just to learn something because a lot of times the rut comes from repeating the same thing over and over again, not doing anything in a new way. Three, two, one, zero, and we're done. Okay, time's up. Um, let's go on to the next one. Okay, 10 minutes. Look at that one. Isn't that cool? It's got a little reflection. Bonus points if anybody puts in the reflection. <laughs> but yeah, I remember being in a rut and then I took, um, I, well, a, a few times I've been in a rut, but the one that I'm thinking of is when I took Iris Compete's uh, fairy workout course because she draws things differently than I do but at the same time I really love the subject matter that she paints and draws because it's like fairies and goblins and things like that which I love um, but she was doing it in a different way you know and then in the artist workout that she has you paint her drawings with her right so it's very relaxing you're not thinking about what should I paint and draw what should I paint and draw you just start drawing, you know, and because you're painting and drawing different shapes that you're used to, it gets you out of a rut. It starts, you know, giving you something different to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's also, yeah, it's like what you're saying, you, it'll, someone is giving you something to draw, like they're giving you that's the the topic so then it makes it much easier than to be like oh no what do I, what do i spend my time like you know like what do i pay what do i draw and then you get into that whole like you like spiral into that <laughs> and then it stops you from just doing anything in general spiral is a great word <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally so many times, like, the thing that stops me nowadays is going, ah, I don't have any good ideas. So I don't want to waste my time just painting and drawing something that isn't a good idea. I'm not looking for great, good ideas. I'm looking for a great idea. You know, so then that's more pressure. Okay, we got seven minutes, so that's not bad. It's not bad, Mase. We got some time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But don't slow down now. That's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> that's instantly what I want to do. But isn't this like 90 minutes going by crazy quick everybody too bad Any other questions from anybody? If not, it's fine. <laughs> it's easier to draw. I think everyone has been focused more. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's like we're all in this together. Uh, sorry, I have another question. Sure. <laughs> um, so, like, when I'm drawing, all I'm ever using is just, like, the default round brush, no pressure or anything. And whenever I get to, like, a textured painterly brush, I get lost. Like, I don't know how to use it. 
So the question is, do I have to learn like textured brushes or is it fine with me just sticking with the default round one? Well, you can draw, you can paint textures with any brush as well. I just want to kind of mention that because like a lot of times um, there's something nice and unifying about using the same brush. Like if I paint with the same brush something smooth and I paint with the same brush something that's very textural, a, a lot of times because I use that same brush to do both, they feel like they belong in the same universe a lot more than if I used, like say something uh, like a really smooth brush and then I use something that's highly textured. A lot of times it can feel kind of Photoshoppy. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't connect as much. Um, which you've also probably seen in like traditional art as well. This can happen in traditional art as well when you're using mixed media or, you know, um, drastically different kind of brushes, perhaps the painting starts to fall apart because of that. So with every, you know, disadvantage there's an advantage in there somewhere and that's what the default brush or using the same brush to paint various different types of elements um, that's when you know the advantage comes in you have anything to uh, add about that Mase? because you. you you paint quite differently with than me I feel like you probably mm -hmm. use more default brushes or more fancy schmancy brushes yeah i do like the fancy schmancy one it really <sighs> uh, i think uh the sh those one i try to be careful um of not going overboard but understanding each brush and the purpose of it because like some texture brushes get you to a certain goal a lot faster than another one like let's just say a rock texture or like something that's uh, fuzzy like a fur so um, what I do with brushes that are textured um, is like you know this is a great example like do studies and try to use those uh, textured brushes and understand like where to use it and how it looks in the in the study so yeah, it's a matter of practice. It's kind of like the round brush. It takes a lot of practice to use and understand. And, you know, I think that's like any tool, even in real life. It's like a pencil is very different from a pen to a brush. And it's just a matter of like just using it and knowing how to use it. Hope that answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> long-winded answer but any uh, other I questions question. yeah yeah <clears throat> i have a question uh i was just kind of wondering um what do you recommend in terms of just like uh loyalty to any one program or like any one brush like at least for you like how often do you feel like you switch between even like digital to physical uh using different programs like using different brushes like what do you think in terms of at least honing your skills? Do you think it's better to constantly try a variety or do you think it's better to like um, just switch around as much as possible and not be loyal to any one program or medium or anything? Well, as long as you're still enjoying what you're doing, uh, switching around as much as possible, I, that's what I would recommend. You know, as long as you feel like you're still enjoying what you're doing and every time you shift to something else you feel like you've gained something from the last thing that you learned you know don't leave a thing before you learn something from it that's what i'd say or else that's truly wasting my time if i spent a bunch of time on something and then i decide yeah it's not for me or whatever i generally will stay on that thing until i l at least learn a bunch of stuff from that mm-hmm um, yeah, I try my best to also, like, try different brushes or, like, uh, programs. Like, I'm trying to explore Quip Studio Paint. Um, oh, yeah? Because it, it is very different from Photoshop, but then um, it, 
the program itself has like it achieves a certain look that is very different from what I can achieve in um, Photoshop. Uh, but that being said, I still haven't really put that in my like professional work, like my whole process. So uh, I think it's good to explore, but just have like a something that you can default to that you know will be will get you consistent results. Like for me, it's like client work. I have Photoshop, and that's I don't really try to put in other um, tools, but. Until I get to that point where I feel comfortable with Clip Studio, then I'll probably, you know, integrate it into my work a lot more. And, and I also like would like to explore putting traditional work, like scanning um, sketches and then putting it into Photoshop. So I think it's I think it's good to explore different programs and tools and all that. Hmm. And we're out of time, <laughs> so. Ah. <laughs> I know. I want to get a reflection. I didn't really get that reflection in. Oh, well, whatever. Okay, so number three, 10-minute pose. Okay, three last 10-minute poses. And here we go. Um, yeah, simplify what you see. Uh, this one, you know what this one reminds me of, uh, Masay? I feel like, you know, as some poses, I was like, oh, this is like a Masay pose. I feel like this one is kind of like a Nathan Fowkes pose, no? Mm -hmm. It's like the subject and the lighting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could totally see that. <laughs> His, uh, his outfit is very shiny. Extreme, yeah. So you have to, everybody will have to kind of really think about what to, what to put down, what to emphasize, what to leave out. Mm -hmm. What to leave out would be just as important as what to leave in. We have another question from Slido. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys ever zoom in while doing these studies? And do you uh, draw with your elbow more often or with your wrist? There's about two questions there. Start off with your shoulder. Uh, transition to elbow. Finish off with your wrist. Uh, mm -hmm. Zooming in and out. I'm zooming in and out all the time, but I'm like, because that's going to really mess people up that are trying to paint the subject. Uh, I'm displaying like a frozen view so that you, so I don't, you know, piss people off <laughs> with the <laughs> subject not. going big, small, big, small. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Masay? Do you zoom in and out, or? Um, generally, I try to zoom out as much as possible so yeah. that um, you can get the overall uh, shape and pose down. Oh, and okay. then kind of going into like zooming little by little, and then getting in certain details and and seeing if if they you know work together like every everything that you put so far. This one's a great one. It's very challenging. Mm -hmm. A little bit less than seven minutes left. But if there's any other questions, uh, please keep them coming. Can I ask a question? Of course, of course. Um, um, my question is that um, I'm really comfortable with traditional rice drawing, but uh, when it comes to digital painting, I'm not really comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know what I have to do for that. 
because I don't really enjoy that. You know, that's a problem. Can you recommend anything to me? Well, one thing is like, are you like not you're having difficulty kind of doing uh, digital life drawings because you're not enjoying it as much? Um, sometimes, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, a lot of times when you get better at something, then you enjoy it more. So maybe this might help. Um, one thing that I had to really get used to with life drawing digitally was my kind of like somewhat loss of control. You know, when you're painting and drawing traditionally you have just way more control right uh, like uh, your brush strokes your exactness and all that kind of stuff um, you know what I mean but uh, you know when I see how the picture of charcoal and paper or uh, when I use ink and every each is different I really enjoy that but in it's always the same. This mm. is kind of makes me bored, and I don't know what I have to do because everybody uh, paints digital. Oh. Have you ha have you tried looking into a specific type of brushes that achieve like a traditional look? Like, um, if it if you like watercolor and charcoal, maybe find a brush pack that has that same effect. So that um, you're kind of, since you're already familiar with traditional uh, medium, uh, you can probably apply what you know already to the brush. It's just, you know, a bit of getting used to, but it does achieve a certain look that you are familiar with. Obviously, I'm not the, the person on. getting asked. I, I just want to say I like tried that before and that helped a lot for me. Just like oh, using yeah? traditional, using more traditional brushes. Like I had that like exact issue. I like hated using the round brush, and um, like the more like the basic brushes. But like, I, cause I used to do watercolor, and then I bought like a watercolor just like um, brush pack, and that like completely changed how I work digitally, at least for me. There you go. <laughs> yeah, another thing that helped me was um, not trying to do such complex. Uh, brushwork or line work you know so instead of drawing one complex line I would break it up into a few different lines and kind of connect the dots um, by breaking up my thinking like that it allowed me to do way more uh, with way better kind of accuracy as well especially with traditional you know because I really picked up on the whole um, that you're comfortable with traditional mediums but not digital and that really kind of spoke to me and um, for the for the person who just asked that question um, I would also uh, do you use fo just Photoshop or what, what program do you use um, I use mostly Procreate Procreate okay um, maybe it I don't know if you have like a, a tablet um, with your computer, but uh, another option could be like uh, Clip Studio Paint. That is actually a great place where some people really like the way the the pen, like the how the program reacts to when you're drawing. And um, I learned this from uh, Iris Muddy. She's the one who actually recommended Clip Studio Paint to me because um, she was saying. The way the program puts down like certain brush strokes and the brush work itself, it feels a bit more intuitive and it feels a bit more like traditional uh, medias, medium. So um, if you ever get the chance, maybe it's good to like explore other digital programs as well. And if I can cut in on that to sort of second Clip Studio Paint, the brush engine for Clip Studio is phenomenal. Ah, there you go. <laughs> um, it's 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 quite literally second to none, and that includes well, maybe not second. It could be second to Corel Painter, but <laughs> mm -hmm. besides that, it, it's significantly more intuitive than programs like Photoshop, and yeah. you can get 
so many. Th I think Marco Pucci actually said that he uses that program a lot. Oh, that's, oh. that's awesome. Yeah, so it's like, you know, there's not one way um, for everyone. Just like try to find something that works for you. Last minute, by the way, everybody. Last minute. This one, I feel like I'm getting so much more accomplished because you're answering so many of the questions. <laughs> my, <laughs> my brush mileage has slowed down like, quite a lot. Uh, so what's your opinion about this, Masaid? <laughs> like, oh, good question. <laughs> This is incredibly fun. Oh, fantastic. Yay. Yeah, me too. I, like, I'm honestly, I'm having so much fun with this. I could do this pretty much like every day if it fit into my schedule. Yeah, like I don't really remember the last time I did life drawing. So it's, it's nice that like um, we have this set up because then it's like, oh, it's here. Like it's already set up. Yeah. And all I have to do is show up and do the work. Uh, time's up. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Two last poses left, everybody. <clears throat> all right. Next 10 minute pose, number four. Holy smokes, right? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. You have to simplify with this one. I remember putting this in and going, this is probably a bad idea. But uh, actually, I, I think it's a, it's a necessary kind of thing. You need one of these things in there where you couldn't possibly paint this in 10 minutes. There's no way. So you got to. You got to simplify. You got to be choosy and in uh, what you end up representing and what you end up simplifying. You like this pose, Missy? Uh, yeah. It reminds <laughs> me of the, the, the bad character in Power Rangers, if you ever watched that as a mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it totally does. A lot, a lot going on. We have a question from Slido. Yeah, please. Yeah, so Anonymous asks, when I draw from anything above my wrist, my lines looked like dropped on the floor spaghetti noodles. How mu long must I endure these spaghettis before they improve? When does this happen? Whenever they draw anything from above their wrist, so if they go from the elbow or the shoulder, like you were talking about, Bobby. Oh, oh. Um, so not actually drawing a wrist, but using your wrist oh. to draw. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, something that I remember doing as a beginner would be like drawing one dot, drawing another dot, and trying to connect the two of them together with the straightest line possible. Uh, a lot of times I would do this before life drawing, actually, just to warm up. Um, some other ones were drawing circles and trying to draw a circle as perfect as possible, right? And you probably did this too, Masse, right? The yeah. circle thing, right? And, uh, and you're drawing, it, like for me, life drawing, I was, I'm always on an easel, like a standing easel, right? So I can't use my wrist. Um, so that really helped me. Hopefully that'll help you as well. Do you have anything to add to that, Missy? Mm. No, I think your, your answer was good. <laughs> you didn't fall for my trap this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. 
Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> nope, got nothing to add. <laughs> Yeah, any other questions? We have this pose and the next pose, and then we're done. This cosplay has too much detail. That's the whole entire point. Yeah, that's the whole entire <laughs> point. So much detail, and then you got to go, okay, well, how am I going to get all this in? What do I actually put in there? Right. So you can see in mine, I've broken it down into a few different things. I definitely took the time to carve out those hands. Um, I left the middle part, you know, all that stuff on her chest, I left that just empty at first. I'm just going to go over it real quick and just add in a tone there. But generally, I kept it all empty. I concentrate on the shoulder pads, the hands, uh, the waist. There's two faces. There's two faces, like with the, with the head thing. Oh, yeah, the, that gnarly dragon thingy on there. Yeah, that's really cool. I feel like this is almost a good concept art exercise because you have to simplify into the important shapes and try oh, to still yeah. get the feel um, the right amount of time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it really is like, it's just a good exercise in general. It's like going to the gym, you know, like what stuff do you want to strengthen because you can strengthen pretty much everything in the gym you know what i mean some people might concentrate on line more um yeah i feel like if i was working in a in a higher resolution because i'm like doing bike pixels here like really zoomed in oh okay like, why why forever. so zoomed in because I get hung on on the details otherwise. Right? Oh. I'd be like, oh, I got, I got to render this. I can't go on to the other thing. Right? It's all about the practice, which I, 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 this is the first time I'm doing this. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, with that middle. Any tips on, on like, faces? Faces? Um, yeah. Don't try to draw eyeballs right away. I concentrate on eye area first before attempting anything that feels like an eye. So for example, in my sketch right now, I have these two shadowy little parts for the eyes, right? And within that, can you picture eyes in there? Right? You probably can. You could probably picture them pretty well. And you could probably picture them a lot better than if I didn't have those two kind of circles there. So. That's why I put it in there, to help me to visualize it even clearer. Looks like a particularly zealous Mega Bloks figure. This, this <laughs> subject is nuts. Uh, less than four minutes left, about a little bit over three minutes left. Particularly challenging to try to get the figure not looking entirely bulky because there still is this rather slim figure underneath all of that excess. Mm -hmm. All those shapes. So many wonderful challenges, all being done in 10 minutes. It's awesome. I don't know, know what that is in the background. I think it's like like a Comic-Con kind of table or something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I just miss Comic-Con. I miss conventions. Do you miss conventions, Masse? You can be truthful. You, if you like your break, no, no. it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the break is definitely nice, but it is, I, I do miss like meeting people and interacting with other artists. It's mm. like that. It's like the perfect place to just like you know hang out, get to know people, and like geek out about art. Because like where where I am, it's like um, I don't have as many artists friends. Uh, so it's nice to just like have a whole weekend of just like you know 
do being around people that do the same thing as you. Yeah. A hundred percent agree with about that. We might not have Comic Con, but we do have Omicron. <laughs> oh, um no. <laughs> 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 rather not. <laughs> Everybody got their booster shots? Yep. Yo. Um, yeah. yeah. Until we need the next one, I guess, right? Anyways, can we change the subject? I'm so kind of exhausted by um, Omicron, you know, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> What Bobby, I really like guys... how you're approaching um, the uh, all the stuff in the middle of her um, body, like all the accessories and. Oh, thanks. It's not totally in proportion, so I appreciate that. It's like putting in the dark, like you know, being very selective of where to put certain things. Oh, thank you. Does anyone know what culture this is, or if it's just like I think it's made up. Cosplay? Okay. I, I'd be surprised looks, if this was real. Because it looks a bit like like the Mongolian like shaman thing, where they've got lots of teeth and like heavy furs. But yeah, it's hard to it's hard to tell whether or not the the faces or of the like skulls are. Um, I want to say yeah. it's a witch doctor from Diablo. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe. Well, it's, it's either game way, culture. we are out of time, everybody. So there we go. That one, holy smokes, that was difficult. Okay, next one here. Last one, everybody. Almost there. That one's cool. For some reason, I feel like this is like a Helen Mingju Chen kind of pose or mm. warrior or uh, Ami Thompson. I would love to see Ami Thompson draw this. Uh, yeah. So definitely not leaving uh, with an easy one in the end. It's interesting doing studies in black and white when like certain elements of color are so important to the design, like the hair, like it's hard to compensate for that or communicate how impactful that is in the design with a study. Yeah, if, if you want to be ambitious, go get it. <laughs> Put in that <laughs> stuff. How do you begin? How do you... So... Actually, I have the opposite problem. <laughs> Because I always started learning from, I take an image or a reference image and make it black and white and try and figure out colors from there. So why There's does... There's a yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, so so val value is incredibly important. Um, and, and value does do most of the work, but I noticed that when I switched to grayscale on this particular image, that orange doesn't exactly pop. It turns into a rather dark color. When does the color matter? Uh, well, you decide. You decide in the very, that's like in the very beginning. Uh, you know when uh, that person was saying, what do you start with? How do you start your stuff? Do you always start with the same approach? And I was like, no, not really. I look at the pose and I think, what's the most important thing about this pose? If it is the hair, if it's the orangeness of the hair, then I definitely will get that in there. And I might even just start with it. But in this case, um, I'm not going to do color because if I did, I would want to really think about, okay, how am I simplifying all the colors here? Because I still need time to put in a bunch of the details. If I don't I can't think of a good simplified way to put in uh, you know, the colors and have it a nice color scheme, then I'd opt to actually not put in any colors because I know if I put in colors wrong, 
it might just attract way too much attention and uh, kind of ruin the whole entire thing for me. Um, but, uh, you know, that being said, something that I know that works is when you have black and white with an accent of red, you know, or a black and white with an accent of orange. So I do feel like it can work because I've seen that work before in like mm -hmm. stuff like uh, Nicholas Marley's uh, drawings, right, Masse? Like there's those black mm -hmm. and white ones with a touch of orange. It looks yeah. wonderful. Really cool. Shohei Otomo's um, ballpoint pen drawings also come to mind. Ah, see, there you go. We've got another question from YouTube this time. Uh, are you guys doing this every week? Uh, so far, so far we are doing this we're, every week, as long as people are down to do this. You know, if if uh, numbers aren't dwindling, then it's like, okay, well, I guess not that many people are too into this. And that's when things stop. So you can... Um, you can invite your friends, encourage others, tweet, like, share, whatever. And let's get a whole bunch of people going. Because if, if, if everybody's down to do this, oh my gosh, I would love to incorporate this into my weekly schedule. Are you mm -hmm. kidding? Like, this is work? Oh my god. <laughs> That's so great. Anyway. Uh, there, there is already like a person who shared their sketches uh, in the LDX live chat from Candle, and I, I was wondering if they want to post this on Instagram, um, could we use like a hashtag or maybe if you have some something in mind? Uh, sure. What was the title called uh, for this thing? Pose Perfect Life Drawing Class. Pose Perfect. Can anybody look up if Pose Perfect has a mm -hmm. hashtag already? I have a feeling it might. Yeah, sounds too good to be true. Maybe, oh, there. maybe Pose Perfect oh. might be taken. I mean, Pose Perfect has an unfortunate acronym. Oh. If you think about it. Yeah, and Pose there are a few. Over thousand. <laughs> on, on Twitter, I would not suggest using the tag Pose Perfect. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what that means, but I, I'll find out later. Uh, yeah, anybody have any good ideas for a yeah, any suggestions? hashtag then where you could all check out each other's stuff? Lightbox Life Drive? Uh, wow. Sure, I guess that's a little long. That's actually really long. LBLD? LBLD? LBLD. Well, this is also, this is a schoolism thing. So I would love to kind of say schoolism instead of light box. But maybe I'm just getting too picky now. Uh, those 90 for 90 minutes. Uh, yeah, I guess we could still call it 90 Mac if you guys are down for that. Yeah, it could just be the Evolve 90 Mac. Yeah, all right, that sounds good. You know, we did this for 90 minutes. And by the way, the time is up. I didn't even notice. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Thinking about a hashtag. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great job, everybody. Holy smokes. Um, why don't we... Go through, you want to just review what we drew, Miss A? I don't even think I really saw what you drew. Yeah, let's do it. I feel like I was so caught up in my own drawing. Okay, so we have uh, this one. Do you want to go from one minute, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. From the very beginning? Very beginning. Right? Like oh. chicken scratch. But that's okay, right? Just getting those bad drawings out. Um, number two. This one, I like ours. Honestly, I kind of like them. You know, they're so minimal. But if Darth Vader wasn't in the center, I'd still guess Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see how Hagrid does. Hagrid <laughs> is a little abstract, I think, on both sides. I wish I, I wish I didn't um, focus on the, the jacket detail as much. Mm. Yeah. Well, there's all sorts of little kind of traps in each one of these poses where it's like just asking you to pay a lot of attention onto it, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, that's a great one, Masse. Thanks. Yeah, I really slowed down on that one. All right, and here's two-minute poses. This one I kind of liked mine. I feel like yeah, I... I got a bit ambitious and started trying to draw the dark lines. I think the thing I liked the most about mine was like just drawing around the teeth. So it looked like an open mouth with teeth showing. Mm -hmm. Here's the next one. Yeah, this one's so your kind of pose. Great mm -hmm. job. Okay, and then this one. This was kind of difficult, you know, for a two minute pose. This one was tough, right? This one was tough. Yeah, it was quite interesting. Sorry, I kind of have to go, but when is the next uh, session of this going to be, you think? Uh, next, Wednesday. next Wednesday. Thanks for Wednesday. joining us. All right, next oh, one here, sure. Wolverine. Oh, mine does not have the blades. I know, I, I cheated. Don't <laughs> worry. I put mine in after the fact. This one... This one was a, a really fun subject, not a whole body, so that was nice. This one was fun too. Another kind of difficult one. This one, I feel like we could have done this better, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. This is such a good photo, I feel. But anyhow, they're all difficult. This one was really difficult. Oh, yeah. Five the minutes. Shiny material, the mm -hmm. and the belts. Okay, and then this one here. Yeah, you rocked that one. Awesome. Hey. <laughs> yeah, this was fun. You got the it's face in there. Dark mm -hmm. This one was fun, too. This one was really fun, too, yeah. Quite difficult. Actually, um, yeah. It's it doesn't seem like it'll be as difficult as it as it was. And this one, I definitely ran out of time. Um, yeah, and these ones are all ten minute poses. So here's the other ten minute pose here. This one was tough. All right, second last one. That one was nuts. <laughs> I love how you have faces on all the little. Yeah, I think that's my favorite part. It's the little <laughs> creatures like face. And, and last yeah, but not yeah. least, there you go. Yeah, this one, I, when we started talking about Helen Chen and Ami Thompson, I'm like, I'm going to try something a bit more like stylized. Mm. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. All right, everybody, and we're all done. But you know what's not done yet? The Schoolism Winter Sale. You save thirty oh. over 30% 30 off on an annual Schoolism subscription. And with a Schoolism subscription, it's kind of like Netflix for artists. You get access to all of the courses. So definitely sign up if you haven't already. And uh, that's it, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye, everybody. Thanks, bye.